Hello, this is Paul, and this is another weekly live stream. Welcome, fellow Mithruna dragons. And uh, tonight we're going to be going over choppable blocks. Now I'll show you where I've caught up, where I've got to last week after we uh, stopped. Before I get too much farther, down in the bottom of the page there is the link to the last test engine build, which was from late January. Hopefully, another one coming up soon. If not this week, maybe next week as I wrap up these last bits of changes. The password there is right you can see that dragon um, and that's where you can download the latest build or join the discord a lot of cool people on the discord before I get too much farther let's thank the patrons yes uh, the uh, since I just had to take money out of savings to pay my mortgage I do appreciate the fact that I don't have to have any concerns about running my servers and things so thanks guys plus it just means a lot that you guys are members and and uh, keeping track and stuff I've even got a couple free members that, that I appreciate. I think it's cool that you guys are following along. All right, so without getting uh, in the weeds, let's get started. Um, hopefully you guys know the deal here. Says I have two concurrent viewers. Welcome to the chat channel. Welcome to the live stream. Okay, so last week I think we were playing with um, uh, making the blocks like deform, you know, based on the signatures and stuff. Um, let me see, do I have something going on on the Discord? Oh, ha, ha. there you go. Um, okay, yeah, so anyway, that's the Discord you should join if you're even remotely interested. There's some cool people there, and we talk about cool stuff um, related to Mith Mithruna and related topics. Okay, so anyway, last week we were playing with um, taking a block, and, you know, if I click on it with the special little tool we added, you know, trying to turn it into a different shaped block based on sort of nearby shapes and um, block signatures and things. So we'll start off with the stone, and we'll make a cube down here, and I'll zoom in. That's uh. Oops, move ourselves down a little bit so that we're, uh, actually, so we can put one here instead. Um, and so I did get all that working, and it's pr working pretty good. So if I chop off this corner, it's going to find the closest block we get, which should be like a wedge of some kind. Yeah. And so if I try to, like, take this off, it'll do a full wedge. If I take this off, it'll do, like, that vertical wedge. If I take this off, it'll go away. Um, if I was to do it a different way, like if I chop down here first, we get that. I chop up here, we'll get that, and so on. I think sometimes you can get it to go like the vertical. Let's see if I do like this. Yeah, no. There's some there's some way you can get it to do the posts and the beams if you select them in the right order and stuff. But but really what we want to do, so um so that's working. And so if you had like um you know the big four by four blocks, and if you imagine these were real full-size Mithruna blocks you, know, you can come in here and you can click and just chop away at little bits of it and it tries to find the closest shape you know and it's um, and so you know the, this would require a couple chops before you could get rid of the block which I think is kind of cool um, the other thing I did was uh, oops new yes I want to clear current objects was if you have a block select so the, that's going in one direction if you have already the block chopped up into little bits um, you know in the you know, if you have one of these blocks already you know and you want to chop it up that's fine but but what if you had in the world oops, in the world what if you had a wedge like this oops uh, that's not what I want to do but a little wedge so what if you had a little wedge like this and you started chopping it I need to be able to turn it into the you know four by four little shrunk down version and so I played with um, you know the logic to do that so basically how would I create you know sort of the object that was the four by four and so I have this expand block which shows you know basically it used the regular blocks to find a close facsimile it doesn't work for everything and and I'm gonna have to deal with that for example the the shingles um, we have a limited sort of uh, there we go we have limited uh, the shingles block 
can't represent all of the facets of this when blown up. So if I do this, you could see um, it doesn't have a cube. A, a, there's no cube shingles block, so it can't fill these in. It does the best it can, you know, with the wide ones. So um, for some of these, I'm gonna have to do custom mappings uh, so that it, you know, fills these in with, you know, dirt cube, uh, not dirt cubes, but uh, wood cubes to get close. And some blocks won't be like so choppable anyway, because I'm, I'm not sure it makes sense to take teeny little ch tiny chunks out of shingle blocks versus just smashing them up into wood, you know, in the like second or third hit. But anyway, that's the idea. And, you know, there are other ones that have sort of limited shapes. And so it becomes difficult to fully represent as a big block. And you'll see what I mean by why we want to do this in a second, because I'll show you where I got to in the game so far and where we're going to be starting off tonight. Do, do, do. We're going to be starting this a lot tonight. I apologize in advance. You guys are going to get tired of that same 15 seconds of music. If you can even hear it at this volume, I don't know. Yeah, this week I spent uh, some time fixing a bunch of things because I tried to add some more support to the you know, database SQL layer and found out there was a way to sort of hang the game on startup if you had a certain kind of error. So I spent a couple nights you know, fixing that so that if there was an error during that first startup screen before we get to the lobby, that, um, that it would present an error and kick back out to the main menu. So that, that took a little bit. And I added the support I needed to the SQL database layer, but then I think I actually I'm not going to use it, but we'll see. So let me bump up the light so we can see. Whoops, that's not, that's the day, not the hour. Okay, so so what I did was um, I hacked into the um, you know the test wand that I'm holding in my hand, you know the one that I can use to create Gaffin and stuff, so that if I click on a block, it will replace it like it'd be like I'm chipping away at it so if I click this it's going to replace that with the object form like if I tried to drag it out you see it replaced it with an object and then when that um, you know after 30 seconds it turns back into the block if assuming I haven't screwed up positioning let's give it a few seconds Boink, 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 come on. Because that's the idea is like, yeah, so it put it in the wrong place because I moved it. Um, normally you wouldn't be able to drag them out of the way. So let us fix this so that I can get on with what I'm talking about. Um, so let's see, we want that block. We'll put it back where it was. Okay, we'll go back to the test wand. All right, chip test. So... The idea being that, you know, if I started hacking at this, it would turn it into an object and I would start chipping away at it. So I could chip away at this one and it turns into an object. I could chip away at that one and it turns into an object. Most of these, like those kind of blocks, they work pretty well. Like these, eventually I'll make that transition a little smoother, right? It works okay for those. It works okay for these. Um, you could hardly see that one move. It, the wood blocks don't do it exactly, but they, they get pretty close. Um, the shingles blocks, you can see... They'll mess up completely. Um, and if I do one down on the edge here, you can see, you know, it's basically not cubes in there. Um, you know, these things will work out okay. You know, the texture's a little weird, but they're, they're doing their best. Um, but I think it's a good enough. There are some blocks that have, like, apparently a bug when they're turned into objects. Like, if you do the, the dirt, um, there's, like, a weird bug with the shadow system if you turn off shadows you know that problem goes away so there's some bugs i have to work out um, but where we are tonight is what i want to do is what's supposed to happen is when i click on this you know it turns it into a temporary object and then as i click on it it's supposed to you know chip away at those and so i need to build the infrastructure for so that when i'm clicking on it it turns into a chippable object not just a regular static object and then um yeah because that's the other thing is if you turn these into temporary objects they're not like you can walk right through them now because they're like <laughs> not real objects i'd have to make them 
yeah, it's not even going to let me make it uh, solid. But um, so I need to make those solid. Uh, I need to make it, you know, add the infrastructure so that when we click on them, it starts to chip away at the blocks. And that's what we're going to be doing tonight. Happy Friday, Lando Calrissian. Thanks for joining us at the beginning of the stream. Hopefully we can get a lot done tonight. So that's what I started. I started building out the networking in order so that if you, you know, do chip away at one of these, it has the information to send back to the client so that it can edit its local version of this object instead of sending the whole object and stuff like that. So that'll be interesting. Um, and so let's get started. First, I want to, you know, this little chip test in the test wand, I want to start hooking that up to the the real backend code instead of you know just creating an entity and stuff so we'll get that we'll start with that so i'll show you where that is yeah i think this will be a heavy coding night um so and we'll be starting the game a lot so if you have questions or, or want to have a discussion on some level when we're waiting for the game to start up that'd be good times to ask um so there's the test object, which right now, see so this is when it's the chip test. So it gets that cell of the world, um, you gets the raw block type, and then creates this um, destructible block. And that actually is what causes the, there's like a destructible block system now. And of course it's way over here. Yeah, destructible object system. So that's what's responsible when we actually is that what's responsible for that? That puts it back. I guess we do zero it out. Interesting. I didn't see that code over here. Oh, this is what it is. So there's a sh sort of new shape factory I added. If it's got this dot fax extension, it knows it's supposed to be a facsimile. And so it uses the block type. Um, and that creates the shape. And so we really want to make these static so that we can't walk through them. but. Ultimately, what I really want to do is not put this code in the script. It's a sort of an implementation detail and the logic for when we set the world cell to zero and whether we set the world cell to zero, whether we leave it and so on and so forth, that shouldn't be up to the script here. So what we really want to do is call this other system over here, um, this, uh, not that one, this one. We wanna make a method here to you know, chop, so chop and we'll just make it a um, maybe we'll include a direction vector it's like I can think of we might want to chop a little differently based on you know direction I'm just trying to think of all the things that we would want but this is sort of a general service feature and so then over here in the test object, I thought I saw something fly up over here. Okay, so in here, what we want to do is, I think it's called system and destructible object system. I definitely saw something fly up on the corner over there. chop and for now we'll pass a null for that um, but we want to the actual location is what we want to pass and um, now I'm like paranoid I keep looking over here in the corner because I saw that thing fly up yeah another one yeah so somebody's hitting these things or something, right? Because it then flies up. Nice. <laughs> it's That's weird from this perspective. Does it show as a log on the live stream? Oh, somebody's clicking the button. Or maybe it's they're liking the video. I don't know. Whatever. Um, pretty cool. Oh, a little party. Okay, cool. Somebody's playing with the icons. Okay. Neat. Okay, so we want to chop the location. We'll pass null for now for the direction because we'll use that when we're actually hooking it up to real chops. And so we want to end up doing all of this stuff again. Um, 
but we'll, we'll do it over in the service now as an implementation detail. And so, uh, no lock, just me. <laughs> okay. Um, I just see lots of little uh, the e emote icons popping up over there in the corner. It's kind of cool. All right. So, oh, wait. I just took this out. That's not what I want to do. Okay. We want to go over here, which is what I was doing. Okay. So, in here, okay, we've got the world. Um, so, all of this part is the same. Look. Um, and type equals mask utils get type. I suppose I could have just let pulled that up. Um, do we have all the stuff we need? Yes. So that's all good. Let's log. Um, always a good idea when we're testing things. Man, this is typing on here so much faster than doing it in the IDE. Um, yeah, I use an IDE all week during work, and yeah. So it's putting stuff in for me and stuff. Um, okay, ed. Right, so entity id. Let's call it block. Um, ed create entity new spawn position. So that'll be the position of the block. Well, we want to get the block location. Um, pick 3d block loc equals loc dot floor so that's like the if you had like 5.2.3 5.2345 it'll just be a 5 or negative 5.2345 it'll be negative 6 kind of thing it picks the next lowest integer um it does it for the whole vector and then i need it back as a 3d um and so this will be oops uh we also have to game constant physics grid is that what it's called working in the script side um it does a lot of things for us because i built in yeah physics grid i built in um nice things so i don't have to remember how to do all that and uh but in java code i have to um blah 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 blah, blah. so we need block loc and we don't care about we want the angle to be natural angle um Oh yeah, well for one thing, um, ED set components, we have to do this as two calls. I think it lets me do this. Um, so that can all stay the same, as can this and this. Oh, activator ID. We don't need a created by. Um, um, so we want to make a destructible block and we need to know the future. So I need to keep track of the last sim time. Whoops. Um, okay. So then I can say, let's see how we do it in the groovy code. Yeah, get future time seconds. Okay. All right. So, new destructible. I cannot type destructible to save my life. And um, it's really kind of bad that I named a, a class this because it's really annoying. Um, so, time, get future time. We want to, like, for 30, we're doing 30 seconds now. I made this, like, I could have made it, like, the created time, but I set it to we can set the future time because it occurred to me, like, certain blocks we i may want to have heal faster like dirt and sand might quote unquote heal faster than stone um just because you'll be chopping at stone a lot longer i just don't i, I just figured they're probably maybe the first couple hits will set like the destructible 
timeout really short. This is basically the time it takes to go back to a regular block. Um, and then just to save us, we'll do a long decay in case something goes wrong. And I need to look up what the arguments to decay are. Um, decay duration. Oh boy. Yeah, so we'll just do end time. Um, so we'll set 60 seconds, oops, 60 seconds, okay, so that should do all that, and then we set the world cell to zero. Now it should be the equivalent of everything I had before, assuming this compiles. And blah, 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 it won't because I didn't include mass. I think mass is in the same. And shape info. Pretty sure shape info is here too. Um, right, the last argument to create normally is the entity data. It's got to translate that string to an integer. Rut row, except components, this is, is plural. Hey, check it out. Once it writes the build time, I know it got past the compile stage. <laughs> That's a cool trick, by the way, if you're developing your own software. Um, just add a little line in your build that uh, puts a build time little text file into your jar. Then you can look that up as a resource. So like when the game starts up, it dumps that out. So anybody sending me their logs, I can see exactly which version of the game was built. And some of my libraries do that too. So um, so it's easy to see when in doubt, you know, the code knows what version is running. Sometimes I put it up in the title bar too. Anyway, if everything worked correctly, <laughs> we should be seeing exactly what we saw before with slightly different logs. Okay, so let's... Okay, we're starting to... Okay, so let's try again. Um, chip test. Let's try to chip it. Ready? One, two, three. Uh-oh. Okay. Um, no such property, destructible object system. Okay, so it's basically... The um, script is sim, not in the standard. I guess not. Um, it's not in the standard includes for scripts, I guess. Base includes. It is. Did I spell it wrong? Who's taking bets that I spelled it wrong? Destructible. <sighs> Lasai. Let's make sure that that's really system before we continue on. It didn't complain, but yeah, system. And this is always going to be run, so it doesn't need to be an optional system. Okay. All right. Let's try again. Hope you all had a good week. My week was a little busy, but that's not new. One of my kids is on spring break, so I was able to sleep in every day this week because they didn't have to get up for school. 
that made all the difference. I'm a completely different person around 1 o'clock in the afternoon if I didn't have to get up at 7 a.m. One of the things I want to do soon is port over that um, sketch shader that I used to make that uh, splash image for when we're loading. It used to be there was like a special way you could do a screenshot where you could take a hand-drawn screenshot by hitting you know shift print screen instead of regular anyway um, I want to port that over because I that's going to be the basis of allowing users to paint their own pictures uh, so let's try it ready one two three oh it worked Whee! and so now it's an object and you can look at it doesn't know who the creator is because it was the world and so yeah now we can do that to oh that's bad. Um, things are breaking. For key C zero facts. Oh, well, sure. So there is a click location problem. I was worried about that. Um, So if I click here, oh, I I had the log paused. Okay, did it? Okay, so that one did work. This one didn't when I did it before. Now it does. Yeah, see that one didn't. Now it did. So basically, there are places where I click. If I click right on the border, that floor is screwing us up. Um, yeah, so like if I clicked here, this one's going to mess up. Yeah. So I need to use that block parameter after all, which means I need to send two parameters over the actual block and the click location. Okay. We'll go ahead and let this one time out while we're here. In case I do something to screw it up. Here it goes. Okay, so everybody should be back to chip, chip, chip. Okay. All right, so two things. We want to change this to pass the location block. Okay, and then over here, I need to so this is the click location 3D block loc. So we'll call them click loc and block loc, and um, get world cell. Block loc, and we've already got block loc, so we don't need to do that. That's the block, that's the block location. And we'll use, in a minute, we're going to use click location to see if we've already got a block. And so that's the other thing we'll need to do is um, when we create these, we're going to have to tuck them away so that we know we've already got. So if the we call chop again in the same area, it's interesting. So that'll have to be a different kind of click anyway. Hmm. Interesting. So let's go ahead and start that process as well, because what we want to have here, object type info create we want to have, let's call it um, a chop facsimile. So we'll create a block type for choppable things. And 
Oh yeah, I want to uh, block cloak. Oops. Yeah. And we can... Yeah, that's not the normal. That's the direction of the chop, which we don't know yet. Um, okay, so then over here... Base objects... I want to create a new type. Eventually I'm going to move this over into its own um, type. Okay, so let's do create type. Move it into its own uh, script file. But for now we'll just lump it in here. Chop facsimile. So this is basically the st a stand-in object and I wanted to pick a name that wasn't likely to be used with anything else. And so then the default action for this should be chop. And but I need to know where we chopped. Hmm. Let's um First of all, we will um, just make sure that this is really the one we're running. Uh, let's return chop block. Um, all right, so let's see if all of the things are working like they're supposed to. Whoa, hey, hello. Yeah, I left some crap behind. Um, quick cloak. What else? Object type info. Yeah. And that is block cloak. And then we need to just do this. Oops. Easy peasy lemon squeezy. Okay. But I'm trying to get to the next point where when we click on the object, it starts chopping things away. And so we need the object clickable, I think, but I need to know exactly where we clicked it. And that's not something that is normally available in the action. But it will be specific to the tools. Yeah, I think we can do this. Yeah, 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 yeah. I got it. I got it in my head now. When we, I'll show you the next. Um, basically, in scripting, you can actually call an action on an object only if it exists. And so, what I need to do is modify the test one so that the left click, when clicked on an object, um, basically conditionally calls the chop action on that object, and then that would call back to our system. You'll see. Um, hey, Jeremy, how's it going? Hope you had a good week. Okay, so let's see if we're back to where we were before. So can I click here and change it? Doink. No. Bad things happened. Um, no signature method chop. Oh. Did I not change it? F poop. Okay. One, two, three. Did I not change it over here? I thought for sure I did. I did. Oh, it's... Mm. Okay, so that's a VEC3i. That's why. Um, actually, I'm okay with that. So I'll change it over here as well. But that means I need to... Here... And I'm going to be inefficient. And just do it everywhere I need it. Um, eventually I'll go back and convert it just once. Okay. Okay, so while we're here, um, since i got to run it again anyway, let's go ahead and do what I was talking about. So this is for if we clicked a block, we use this chip test. If we click on an object, there's like a main click object. 
um, right main click uh, yeah main click object yes the X I'm just checking out um, okay so main click so test wand we want to add this here and I think what is object hits parameters object hit doesn't tell me anything also doesn't tell me anything uh, NDID and the hit location okay so we want to do a different chop well first of all we'll check and make sure that the mode is what we want um, Object hit. Ah, crap. Entity ID. Yeah. Just copy this. Um, we'll log it. And then we'll do this bit. instead of calling this chop we'll call this one and eventually we'll include the eventually we need to include the source uh, probably information as well but this will work for now um, chop object let's call it chop object and chop block just to make sure there are no ambiguities and really what this needs to be is on the object itself I think this is actually going to override the default main click so I think when I do this the test one will stop having a default action we will see in the meantime I will go and fix this guy so this is chop block and public void chop object entity ID object ID back 3d oak 3d dir Probably more information eventually. Log info. Chop. Oh, chop object. In, uh, object ID. Cannot type tonight. Always good to do on a live stream. <sighs> okay, we'll change this to chop block. Okay, so this will get us closer. Let me check one more thing. So in base objects, do we have a main main click block is on object manipulator has a main click block that does oh main click block main main click object already has code to do the default action. I think if we run so this is temporary and it's not the way it's going to really work because normally you'd already be chopping and we'd be doing it on the event that um, anyway what I, we'll do is we will call the super how do I do that um, somewhere around here 
Super run. That's exactly right. Nice. Okay. I made it easy. So else we call super run. That will call the main click object. So we should still have default click, meaning I could talk to NPCs even if I'm holding the test one and stuff like that. Do, 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 do. Okay, so let's see. I, I changed too many things at once because I'm trying to like run the game as few times as possible. But, you know, we'll see. Maybe I broke three things instead of just fixing one thing. Come on. I hope that one day I get to the, I hope to one day get to the point where I pre-compile all those scripts and that that first world loading will go faster. Because as I add new scripts, it takes longer. Boop, boop, boo, ba -doo, ba -doo, boo. Okay, let's move the time forward a little bit. All right, scan forward to the chip test. Let's see what happens. Chip, ready, one, two, three, click. Yay! Okay, so if I click here, it should still work. Chip, yay! And then there should be like a, oh, we're getting a bunch of errors though. Um, action not found, default action. Oh, yeah. Right, so. There is no default action right now for this. Um, apparently I can't even right click on it. Um, it's alive, yeah, but it's not doing what it's supposed to do. And every time I try to hover over it, I get an error because the, um, you know, see now it, they've flipped back. So I screwed up um, by overriding some stuff. I screwed up the default action. So let me click on here. Can I right click at all? No, it's not letting me right click because um, action not found list actions. Oh, 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 yeah. Um, because my choppable action doesn't extend the, um, oh, and it still failed to do it. Um, it doesn't extend any types, my chop facsimile object. That's probably okay. I actually don't want it to have any defaults, but because I would really like it to act like a block. Huh. It's always questions when you try to hack something in around your normal systems always brings up some interesting questions um hmm, and i didn't tech tech ah, test just clicking on it we had more errors than that i think i need to fix this one so i can see the other ones um and so for the moment we will have the we will set up the super types so that we're at least a base object um That way, like, some stuff still works, and I can stub out other things later. The, But that's the only way I'll be able to see if I fixed the other problem. And whether our, the chop object is hooked up correctly, because that's really the next thing we need to do is be able to chop the object directly. And then I'll probably increase the time it hangs around. and create a different test area so that I'm not chopping on my house. Well, a house, not my house. Chopping on the farmhouse or whatever. <sighs> yeah, this sketch, that was taken as a screenshot on the old Mithruna. So I need to port that over because I think it's cool. And that'll be the basis for like being able to paint your own pictures and stuff. Kind of like an a advanced photo mode where you can sketch on them and stuff and color them in. All right, so let's try this. Okay, so yeah, it's, if I look at it, it's called 
chop block, that's its name. Um, if I click on it again, um, chop object. Yep, chop object was called. Cool, 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 cool. Um, I should still be able to chip all these guys away. Okay, all that's working. Um, this should work. I should be able to sneak in here too. Yeah. Yeah, that's another. These uh, stone blocks are another one that screw up with the uh, shadows, like the grass. It's it's definitely the shadows though, because if I go in here and I turn off all post processing, it goes away. And basically, the um, there's no way to turn off the shadows, but that's what's doing it. It's the drop shadows. So I may need to turn off drop shadows for this particular type of object. That is not something I had considered, and it actually makes a lot of sense because they should behave like blocks. The other thing is right now, um, yeah, when we click on this, you know, it replaces, it takes that block out, um, and really there needs to still be a block there so that the light doesn't leak through. If it was nighttime, we'd see that, you know, basically we can see that fire light leaking through. All right, well, let's make a test area so that we can um, stop chopping up the house here. All right, so just wait till that guy times out again. Nice, okay. So, um, oh yeah, well, I've got like some test blocks over here already we could use. Oh, that's my, uh, yeah, okay, let's start over here. Um, man, just, I want to go exploring, but there's, I mean, I know there's nothing there yet, but it feels like there should be, right? Um, all right, so let's do stone. It's a pretty good one to start with. We'll do a couple big um, blocks there. And let's maybe do a couple of different shapes here. Um, let's do a wide wedge. Okay, so we got a wide wedge. Let's do two wide wedges next to each other. And let's do a regular wedge while we're here. Okay. Boink. Boink. Okay, so we've got a bunch of different things to chop. And so if we check to make sure that the chop one still works. Should we still in the chip test? Yep. So if I click here, that turned into an object, that turned into an object. That turned into an object, that turned into an object. These should turn into objects too. Yep. 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 So now if we try, like it'll say look instead of chop, right? Because we haven't changed the default action behavior. If I click on it, it's going to uh, call the chop object. You can see that down here, chop object. So even though it says look, it's not looking. And if I do this, I can look. But So it's all working. Um, I'm going to let them go back to their normal thing. And when I run it this time, I'm going to set that timeout really long because we want to be able to mess with these. But yeah, so all good. We have test blocks to test with. And still, oh yeah, get trees. Uh, I'm right on a border. That's the only, so I'll show you what I'm talking about. Like, um, if we turn on the grid, we're right on a border. And that's the only problem with having built this test here is that um, as we move around, we're going to get lag that we normally wouldn't have. Um, so I'm tempted to move these, although that makes it for a better test because if I'm standing here and I click on that one over there, you know, it's in a different zone. This is the zone grid. So if you're ever curious, the yellow means there are blocks there. You can see the light blue. That means they're empty. And the red is sort of what the central zone is. And the reason the red's not the one I was actually in, like if we move up, it'll move up. The reason the red's not the one I was actually in is because um, it uh, can only extend so deep. Uh, and so it hits 
bedrock basically down there you know um, you'll have many 128 divided by 32 of these things so it's a, I mean it's a, a wide grid and so that is as low as it can go for the center without going below the world if you if you think of it that way so that's why that's red up there um, you know, as we get higher the red would be you know on the same level we are but we're pretty low down here we're just above sea level I think um, oh we're 145 so um, sea level is within 32 of us yeah 160 is where it yeah so we're right in the the uh, you know sort of 32 by 32 chunk above sea level and that's why um, and the, I guess the um, block height goes um, something like uh, anyway doesn't matter I'm getting sidetracked um, okay so let's uh, start making the chop stuff that's actually complicated and could easily take us the rest of the time the next hour to start hooking that up okay so this is all fine it's it's not right but it's close and we already saw that our uh, our thing was being called here so what we need to do here is we know if that entity was clicked oh so I actually do need to hook this up properly um, so instead of calling the system directly we need to call the object hit uh, what is it run if exists chop object object hit for now at least um, so if it is a choppable object and has that chop object action then we will run that and so then I'm gonna cut and paste all of this and put that over here on base objects so down here in the choppable block um, instead of this we'll call it chop object for some reason I have that uh, Dana Carvey chopping broccoli song stuck in my head she was chopping broccoli um, I was playing that for my wife the other night um, okay so this is where we want to call the system now the reason I do this is because the way it was set up before if I clicked the one on any object in chip test mode it was going to call chop object on there and we only want to call chop object on the system you know the systems chop object we only want to call that on actual facsimiles the uh, stand-in objects and so now this if the if the action exists it'll call it on there which is basically calling this action which will only be on these chop facsimile objects and then it will call the system chop so if i've done this right we're all hooked up everything should work just the same as it was before except for now it won't call chop object and it'll have a default action oh it's while i'm on that subject the other thing i want to do is return here and oops always run super run so um, if okay run if exists no we want to say is it has action um, I think run if exists returns um, run if exists return true if it exists um, well we definitely return something 
I think it returns true if it exists. Yeah, it's a boolean. That's my gonna gonna be my guess. So basically, if if we ran it, if we actually had that and we ran it, um, then we'll return. Otherwise, we'll do the default behavior, which means we can click on other objects even when we're in chip test mode. Um, I know it's complicated. It's it's kind of silly, but. I got really used to being able to do default actions even from my test tools. Um, so if I, I don't have to switch items just to talk to NPCs and stuff, it's really nice. Or to pet the dog, for example, no matter what mode I'm in. So I want to keep that behavior. So if all goes well here, test one should still work like normal even in chip test mode. And um, if I make an object and I click, on, if I make if I chip a block, it should turn into an object, and I should be able to call, if I should click on it, and it should still call that same chop object method. Long way around to get where we were before, but infrastructure is important. There was a really interesting conversation recently on the Discord about um, sort of XP, loot, skill, tr um, my opinions on that stuff. So if that wasn't enough incentive to go to this link in the upper left corner and log in and get on the Discord, perhaps that would be an interesting thing to read about. Okay, so we've got that. If I click on it, I get, oh no. Um, it called chop object, um, but did not return true, basically. So then it also called the... Uh, a look I'm okay with that um, for I'll fix that in a second but I should be able to like just still talk to NPCs even in this mode Doink. yep hi Little tambourine sound um, but yeah that's unfortunate so if I click on this and then click again it does the look behavior yeah all right so we'll make that a little more complicated and um, Anyway, um, I have like some fairly strong opinions on RPG, computer RPGs and XP and skill levels and things that used to be controversial like 12 years ago, but now like so many games have implemented um, XP-less systems that it's less of a um, less of an issue. So I think it's ac if Ooh, base object API has action yeah so I have to do this the lame way um, mostly because it's gonna make two of the same lookups and I I hate that um, if it has then it then then run it I mean at least we've already we already know it exists and then we return um, so I think it's just run right Just run, yep. Okay, so let's just verify that works. But yeah, actually so my to sum up my opinion in a in a one line blurb, it's that I believe that all of all of or most of the things we consider grindy about RPGs um, all relate back to XP. That's my controversial opinion. And there's a longer discussion about that on the Discord channel. There used to be, I think there used to be some write-ups on the Mithruna forum, but that the main page for that apparently broke some time back. I think if you have the topic numbers, you can still get to the individual posts but you can't navigate to them and that's really frustrating uh, da, da, da. okay so let's try this again oh it's still an object hmm so that means I should be able to test this nope 
that's not doing what it's supposed to. Um, it's not even calling chop. Uh, oh, it's not finding it now. What did I do wrong? Okay, well, you know, I'm getting um, a bit wrapped around the axle here. We don't need this to work this way. Run exists um, and return and um, that's fine. If we're in chip test mode, then I can't click on things, that's all. And just to be sure that that's actually working, I'll try it again. Slider. Move a little faster. Zoom. chip test should be able to click on here turns it to an object click on it again yep it called chop object we're good and so see if I come over here oh that was fast and I click on one of these guys oops it's calling chop object oh uh, it's not but it uh it basically tried. I can't. I can't run the default actions. It's not calling chop object because it's not the right type of object. But I also. It's like also not performing the default that it says. So it's kind of annoying, but not. It doesn't really matter in this. Um, live stream. We don't have to worry about it. It's, everything's working now the way it needs to for the live stream. Because now we got a lot of like more complicated stuff to deal with, and so I hope to at least get the events hooked up um, we need to so let's make some notes for ourselves so in here look up the object um, uh, find the location to chop, calculate signature of the sub block, swap out the sub block. When I say sub block, I'm talking about you know, each of these is a four by four block. Um, sub block equals one quarter block, uh, one quarter block of four by four by four block object. Okay, so that's these are sub blocks. So we need to swap out the sub block for the the new one. Um, send an event to the clients. So any clients listening we'll get like a change event for that object so that they see it. Um, I'm going to have to probably deal with the lag later, but I hope to put this on a separate channel of the networking stack so that hopefully there's not a whole lot of lag and I'm hoping the animation covers up the, the issue. 
uh, I did a bunch of stuff to make sure that when you click blocks normally with the wand, you know, they res out really quickly because they're editing the client locally and then sending the message and it can take, you know, however long it wants. At that point, you've, you've already updated your local view and the server has the chance to reject it, put it back the way it was if you couldn't edit that block. Um, so send them into the clients and um, want to store updated uh, component. So each of these has this destructible block component that's got the current block type in. And so if we've updated the block type, we want to set, well, even still, we want to set a new expiration time, I think. So that's the other thing. Swap out the sublock for store the updated component. Uh, swap out the sublock for a new one. Recalculate the block signature. Store the updated component with updated timestamp. And send an event to the clients. And if we do this on a background thread, actually the client events go on a background thread anyway. Um, we do this on a background thread, we could kick that off before we start doing these other things. But what I mean by this is, let me let the whiteboard load for a second. Okay, so if we think of, we have those four by four blocks. So we turned a, let's say this is one of those stone blocks, right? That's a full size one meter regular Mithruna block. And then we clicked on it to chop it. And that chopped it into these, you know, this four by four object and put it back in the place. And it looks exactly like the other one, or for the most part does, because it's in that carved mode. So the texture scale is the same and so on. And so if we've clicked on like this corner up here, uh, we want to replace that with, you know, a sub block that's pretty close so we you know that'll be that wedge like that that's got that top chopped off um, you know and then if we click down here we'll replace it with the you know, maybe this version of the block but um, at some point we've chopped enough of these fully away that it's better if when we put the block back if it's you know, one of these instead of a full solid stone block, we put back, you know, the the close facsimile. So there's several levels of signature. There's the, you know, sub block signature, which turn use we use to figure out the best little choppable block. And then as we've totally removed blocks or they are partially filled, we need to find, you know, the signature for this guy so that we can you know, replace its stand-in or replace its block when it, when things fall back to normal. So the idea being as you chip away at this and you stop and you walk away, it'll revert back to a solid block, but it'll be close to the shape you did or at least include all of the... Anyway, that's that's what we're going for. So that's what I'm talking about here. The key today, we need to do this um, I'm going to put little stars. This is important. This is important. Um, this we absolutely need to do. This we absolutely need to do. This I could wait on. Um, this I need to do. And this I absolutely need to do. That's the. This is the trickiest part of what we got going on. And I started this infrastructure before the live stream started. But this... And then on the client to get that event and use that to edit the local object, whole other trick. Um, I hope we get to that, but um, if we start seeing the events on the client, I will be really happy because we don't even have the listener infrastructure set up or any of that. So let's first see if we've got the object. We should be able to do this. Um, basically, there's an entity container in here that's watching all of these objects. Anytime you see a destructible object in the spawn position on an entity, we keep track of it in this block container. And so if I, you know, go here, I should be able to say 
Um, I think it's get object object ID. But before I have to compile and feel the error, um, let's look at the entity container. Entity container is an open source thing, part of the S SIO2, silicon dioxide um, toolkit. That's a JMonkey engine add-on library that you can get. Okay, so there's the one of my open source packages that a lot of people use. Ties a bunch of the other sim libraries together, like Lemur and Zaius and stuff. All right, so we've got the tracker. If we didn't really have it, we'll log a warning. Oops, logo, moth. So tracker found for object ID and we'll return. And that's the tricky part. The other thing we want to do is, hmm. So when we create the block, we probably want to keep it celery. Like we can look up its shape. Yeah. Hmm. Interesting. So we want to update the physics object too. Um, uh, edit, edit the block, edit the cells, um, make sure physics is updated. So that's the other thing is we want to make sure that the the shape for that static body gets updated. Um, that's not something, well, I mean, technically we don't have to do that today. Um, but it's something to consider for when we're grabbing the cells and we're going to edit them. Uh, but I'm thinking when we create the tracker for the first time, we could do the same thing that shape info did. I'm just trying to remember how to get the cell loader thingy. Get cell array storage. Is that really it? Um, no, it's the shape factory. Let's see, this is what I'm talking about. Um, all right, well, I can cut and paste the code from there for now. I can remember where I put it. Um, where did I put it? I th think I closed those files. Or are they up here? exciting content, eh guys? Watching me look for files. Um, where did I put them? Shape. That's where. Fax shape factory is where the magic happens. Um, oh no, it's the um, it's the blocks function. Uh, so we need these things, which I seem to create everywhere I need them instead of sharing them, and that's a problem too. Um, let's get this close to where we need it. And I need two 
two of these things. I don't need that. I do need those. Okay. Um, I think I have everything else. We want the similar shape index. We won't do this in the constructor, we'll do it in initialize. That should all be fine. Okay, so that gets us what we need. And then the magic is here. Um, and so So I got the magic out of there. Got the magic. I've got the magic in me. Um, so we want to get the, we want to get this the first time we're created just so that we can Lock dot get type. So we can create the facsimile the first time we're updated. And then we'll have that those cells. Okay, so now we have a cell array that we can edit. And hopefully I didn't just break a bunch of stuff. Um, so now we can find the location to chop, which will be based on good question. If we know the spawn position, oh, do that on updates. Okay, so we know the spawn position. We eventually this needs to be down here where all the data is, but I'm gonna put it here for now. Um, so relative equals tracker oh, loc dot subtract tracker dot. Um, what do they call it? Position get location log info relative I'm gonna check and see if we're um, even in the right ballpark here in a second so then we want to so cell is relative malt four because we're in quarter space let's just try rather than do the um, tiny signatures let's just try to remove blocks that are already there for now um, so rather than replace like on my picture over here where I was talking about um, it occurs to me rather than trying to replace these little sub blocks we'll just chop them out completely and see if we get all the events we're supposed to get because you know setting them to zero is going to test all of the things that everything else would with without having to worry about the little sub block signatures which is you know some just different math here um, but this will simplify things a lot okay so then we'll log that and we'll make sure it's sane before we go too much farther oh hello it's not called that get block type of course Were there any others? No. Okay. All right.
Yeah, I've considered that um, in the case of when we click the block and it disappears for a second while well, before the object shows up and vice versa, that I'll, when I convert these to choppable blocks, that I will never actually remove the real block from the world, but that it'll be a client side trick. Um, but it creates some weird issues for the physics. And so what I may do is have every type, every block shape have like a flag that can be set that says they're not really there. So that the physics engine ignores them. Um, so on. So what was I testing? I was testing to see if I, so this should be chip now. Yep, chip. Let me move this so I can see the log. Okay, so we chip. That changes into a chip. We click again. And we should have gotten chop object relative cell. Okay. Um, so let's click on the other sides and make sure. Yep, so that's, that's the problem I was worried about is we're getting out of bounds. It should be 0 to 3. And we might need the click normal. At any rate, for now, I'll just clamp it. Um, I'll just clamp it. Uh, max cell. So it's just going to static final vec 3i. Oops, 3i. Max cell equals new vec 3i. Oops. 333. Three, three. And then what I can do is this trick here where I do um, cell equals cell dot min max cell. So basically, if it's already less than that, it'll be the. You know what I'm saying. So if it's more than four, it'll turn into three. So let's see, chops it. Okay, so then we ought to be able to say, hmm. The other problem we're going to run into, yeah, so, yeah. There's a whole shape factory thing that's got to happen that's, um, yeah, there's a lot of work here. It's a lot of work here, but let's like, see if we've at least got the um, hookups done. So we can set cell, cell.x, cell.y, cell.z to zero um, for now. We're going to skip that. We're going to skip that. Um, I'm just going to set the timer really long now. Um, so we'll set the decay to 30 or to um, 10 minutes and this to what, five minutes, right? So the object will hang around for five minutes while we edit it and stuff. Um, so I just really need to get the client to server infrastructure hooked up because it occurred to me the way I create blocks on the client is incorrect I really need to be asking the server because if we walked into that area and somebody had already been chopping that block we need to get that version of the block so um, so there's a back and forth infrastructure that has to happen and I do have the session set up for it, but what we need to do here is now s create a, a listener, event listener system. So um, let's call this um, these, yeah, I cannot type this to save my life. Destructible uh, listener, that's fine. This will work for now. And this is Mithruna. Sim, it's an interface, so we don't need all this crap. And what do I want to say here? I have already a cell event, 
but I think I'm just going to go simple for now. Um, uh, X, Y, oops, Y, and Z. Everybody can do their own calculations from that. And so then in here, in here, we want to private, I think it's in the physics stuff. Yeah, we've got that. Okay. Oh, these are all out of order. Oh, well. Dying array listeners equals new. Oops. Dying array class. Okay. Let's make some add listener methods. Pope void add listener. Listener. Oh, let's call L. Remove listener. Okay, so we'll do this the... Oh, we're going to need to know the object ID. Yep, okay. Cell change, which object, that object, which cell, that cell, what did it change to, that value. Okay, gotcha. Um, and so here, I'm just gonna put this here for now. Whoops. All right. So I'm gonna make myself type it again. No. L listeners get array. It's a trick for garbage free. Um, Okay, so we'll call this with the object ID cell.x, cell.y, cell.z value. So the reason this is less desirable and it would have been better to pass an event object is that there are more things that you might edit than just solid blocks. Um, and there's lighting updates and various other things that we want to send through. And there's already a cell event infrastructure built into the world data. Um, that could use all that, but this is really simple to implement. And um, okay, so then in the host, when we start hosting on a session, whoops. Um, hmm. I think I'm going to cheat and implement that. Um, so then I'm going to need this method. So this is the thing that handles a particular client's destructible session. Um, no, let me down here. And we'll call, so I see there's a, another listener that's just for between client and server communication. And in the ID, and I think I'm going to make this look the same. It'll just make my life easier today. Um, it's not necessarily the most efficient way to do it if a lot of things have changed but it will make m my life really easy see um, what is it object cell changed yeah but these are because these are things I can easily go back and change before I cut the release um, but not on a live stream because it gets kind of boring typing infrastructure um, so we will call the listener that's already been registered. That means though that we need to look up the service. Game systems get. Let's not mess around. Dot class, true. We should always expect it to be there. Add, I call it listener. 
Just listener, yep. I'm awesome that way. Um, okay, so we just add our listener to the session. So that should do that. It'll call our listener back. And I've since messed up our method signature over here. So, yeah. Um, int x int i int the e, oops. The int, int value. And we will update this. always um, sort of disappointing when you start scratching the skin off of some, you know, a topic, uh, not literal skin, metaphorical skin, and realize how deep it goes. Um, so this means that we'll have gotten the data back on the client, and then we could start hooking it up to the client code itself by setting up a similar listener infrastructure here. In fact, we'll start that as well. This comes in on a separate thread. How do I do this for the data session stuff? Yeah, I do use a copy on write array list. All right, then. Um, oh, I've already got the listener set up here, but we will do just the regular destructible listener. Oh, and that means I've got to bring in all of these. Make sure everybody has the import they need. Okay, so listeners, when we get that blah, 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 this needs to be, this will be an internal thing. Um, and then we can do um, L, what did I call it, just cell changed? Yep, good. Cell changed entity ID, X, Y, Z, value. And I could have used the same listener for both of these levels, but I want to reserve the right to send a bunch of compressed data that might re mean multiple changes and then call this many times. Because you know, the client would rather see, well, I mean, the client might see in bulk anyway, but they'll come in as raw data and then I'd unzip them, unpack them, and send it to the you know, actual UI code in a better form for it. Today, they just happen to both look the same, and so it seems, seems silly. But while we're here, let me go ahead and, well, let's just see if this works, eh? Let's see what I broke. Yeah, all kinds of stuff, didn't I? Um, so this needs also, wait, who's complaining? Destruct able, 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 able. Oh, this whole thing is re is named incorrectly. Am I crazy? It's I B L E, right? I looked this up. Why do I pick words? Yeah, destructible. Able to be destroyed. So I've essentially. Um, named a bunch of things incorrectly. This is correct, this is correct, this is correct. Oh, that's not even the, that's a separate thing. So, let's... Yeah, nice. Okay, so... Replace all these. Replace all. Okay, and then we have to save this as a different, because it's saved as the... Oh, boy. My editor decides to go weird at some point and stop showing destructible. Yes. And then we will delete the other one, the incorrect one. Yes. We'll do the same over here. 
Replace all. <sighs> I mean, it's a good word. It's the right word. Oh, this one's working. Um, whoops. But if you can't type it <laughs> and you don't have your IDE helping you out, perhaps it's better. Oh, and that means that the everything that's using it is now incorrect too. Um, oh, I, that's supposed to be min local. Okay, I got another thing. So let's just make sure. Place all on the client. Let's make sure. Replace all. Okay. Um, there was another thing I noticed, which was this, and this is not min, it's min local. So basically get a, re yeah, so anyway, um, who's complaining and, you know, dis destructible session. Did I name that one incorrectly also? I did. <laughs> oh boy. It's important when you do something like this that you do it on a live stream. Um, right. In front of everyone. Super important. Um, and I never did go back and delete the other, um, of that other class. Yes. Cancel of the hosted session. I think I never did. Yeah. Destruct double. And I, you know, I could blame the English language, but I know better. There was a, um, one of, early on in one of my, um, jobs. So if I click right here, can I just, doink, doink? Yeah, okay. The, um, we were using, this is back in, I think we were still using CVS, not even Subversion yet. And um, something we were doing, like a web harvester or something, and somebody spelled it O-R instead of E-R. And harvester is actually an E-R word. And uh, that annoyed me so much that I went into the... Back then in CVS, you could actually go edit the... It just basically kept a bunch of diff files in there. So you could actually go and like hand edit the version files and change the name, you know, basically change the code in the version files. And so I went back and I eradicated all versions of Harvestor OR with Harvest and replaced it with Harvestor because that just bugged me so much. I didn't even want it in history. <laughs> um, okay, let's go. Let's go. Whereas Mario would say, let's -a go. All right, so we need this in some places. Destructible listener. Yep. And where else? Destructible session hosted service. I think that I, I thought that I already had it. Why no, I do not. That means we're gonna need it here too. Nope, already got it there. Smart there. Okay, so let's see what else is bad. Well, we're getting closer. Okay, so that's just wrong. Because it's called object ID in both of those places. Destructible object system. Class. Should find it. Cells, I think. Value should be zero. Okay. So there's triple search object service. Those are object IDs. Um, uh, no. Triple session client service 107. Int ID, Pfft, int it ID. I make that mistake a lot too, or I'll leave out the N or one of the T's. Any, any, any. Okay, so that should get rid of a bunch of um, hosted service. That should already have that. D 
destructible list. Oh, no, that's not it. Um, we need the destructible object service as well. That's what it's complaining about. Okay, so let's see if we got any closer. Oh boy, I might weekend cut out for me. Um, it's system, isn't it? Yep. I think I go back and forth, or do I, you know, I call them all systems. Yeah. Okay. I'm not being dumb. Um. Nope, it's the hosted one. Okay. Um, that's all good. That's now that's good. Structural object system. I was just there. Line one ten. Yeah. Uh, should be tracker dot cells. And what was the other thing it complained about? Value. Oh yeah, yeah. We're just setting it to zero. Um, you know what? In fact, I will new value equals zero just to save myself some pain. Later. All right. Will it run? Yep. Man, I really hoped we would get to the point where we could see these changing on the client, but I, I just don't know. I expected to be farther along than this, but I, I had neglected to think about something um, with respect to the object transfers. There's probably yeah, another 12 hours worth of work to get this finished, I'm thinking. To the point where it's usable. I'm hoping we get to the point where we can see something tonight. I got like 18 minutes left. I don't want to go past 11. But I could. I mean, we'll see. We'll see where I am. If I'm close, we'll just keep going. I seem to pick up a lot more people on the stream in the second half anyway, so it's not always a bad thing to hang out a little bit. Okay. So we've also set this up to late. These will last a lot longer. Um, so if I call this, it turns into a block object. And then if I call it again, I should see. Okay, let's stop. Destructible object system, blah, blah, blah. I got that. Destructible session client service got. So we got the message on the client. So that means we can hook in on the client and do something with that information. Oh, man. Sometimes it's a long way to go to get to where you want to be. But now, let's see. Okay. So on the client, relatively near the model view state, we want to have a destructible IBLE object state. All of that's good. Oh yeah, I gotta fix that template. Okay, so Mithruna. Client view. Okay. And I think rather than watch for. So the normal thing for one of these app states would be for me to watch for all of the entities with destructible block, blah, 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 blah. But since we know we're going to be getting events, and those events might already be filtered based on our interest, they're not right now, but they could be. We will do this the more straightforward way. We won't hold a lot in memory. We'll just wait for the events to come in. We'll just do that. Oh. Sim does not exist on 
the client. It's a server only thing. So this is where an IDE would be nice because I could just refactor this. Um, whereas now I'm going to want to move this somewhere more central. Uh, actually, core is part of... I think I'm okay. Yeah, it's all in the same library. We should be all right. Okay, so what we want to do... What we want to do... Let's make our own little listener here. Um, implements. All right. Okay. Got that. Got that. Got that. Okay. We all good. It's all good. Okay. So we'll go ahead and grab the model view state right away during startup um, this dot models equals get state model view state class so um, here's another interesting thing so there's uh, you know dependency injection is very popular I you know inversion of control frameworks and so on um, and I wrote the second engine, the second version of Mithruna engine had built on a lot of that. It had its own little IOC framework, which did dependency injection. So I could have set up here, you know, at inject or whatever the annotation was. I found that not to be um, any better than basically looking up the collaborators directly. This is still one line. It happens where I know it happens. Um, I can say whether it's optional or not just by that. I could ask for null and look up something else. There's all kinds of logic I could put here, but in the easiest case, it is no more code. Um, not really. I have one extra line here where I need the annotation here, that kind of thing. Um, but I find this much better. And so when I did the third version of the engine, I went with this approach where we can just look up collaborators in game systems and stuff. And then all of my stuff tends to work that way. The game system manager, which is the open source in the open source some, uh, SIO2, SIO2 library, um, it does that as well. And I find that much better. I've like shunned inversion of control dependency injection frameworks. Um, they make unit tests harder to write, et cetera, et cetera. Um, actually, this kind of does too. That is, I, mean, I guess, is once you have setters and uh, it gets weird. But I prefer, I prefer to see it. There's no magic. I know what that's doing. Uh, okay, let's log. This is step one: is to make sure our listeners hooked up right, right? Which we haven't even hooked up yet. The yeah. So I mean, like the right answer for all these is to have setters and stuff, but um, you can actually override these methods to return things you want and mock them up it's it's just i don't know i find this cleaner and i can do logic easier um, import through the sim <sighs> i'm gonna regret this i probably yeah uh yeah Anyway, destructible. When I thought to name it that, I didn't know that it was going to cause me such grief. Um, but yeah, definitely type things a few times. Okay, so when we get initialized, we want to look up, oops, excuse me, the client, is it connection state? connection state 
and then we want to look up the service. Okay, so we will, we need to, client.net, okay. Druna client.net connection state. So we will look that up. So this is another thing, like I don't actually need this injected here because I'm just going to be grabbing something off of it. I needed to wait until everything was already initialized. Um, get service. Get service. And we want to grab through no net clients. Did I have the ad? Yep. Oh, let's just fix this right now while we're here. Um. I'm doomed to type that incorrectly every time. Okay, so we add the listener here. We remove the listener here. I think we actually probably want to grab this. I typed it right the first time. Destructible. Ha ha ha. Uh oh, I'm getting better at it. Okay. Okay, so we need um, so much typing. Let's see. Let's see if I've got the code. Um, entity ID, haha. Uh -huh. Simbasilica is another one that originally, um, I had a lot of trouble <laughs> typing that correctly every time. That's the name of my company, so that was bad too. Simbasilica, it's not a, not an easy one to type. Okay, so that's all hooked up right. We need to add it to the um, game session state. Um, which ones do I add right on the constructor? Almost nothing. So there must be a good reason for that. Where do we add the model view state? We'll add this after. There it is. Let's see, will that run? Yep, okay, so let's make sure that that's hooked up right. We're losing people. It's okay, the Pepsi's gone too, so. I think from this point, I might be able to grab the object and regenerate its geometry. We'll see. It's a little weird. I just like to see it, you know. Once you can see something, you can start fleshing out all of the paths to be more correct. But it just 
that good feeling of having it all connect front to back. That's, a, that's what she said moment, if there ever was one, I guess. Okay, so we click here. Oh, that wasn't supposed to happen. That's not supposed to happen. Right row. So apparently when we come back, oh, I know what's wrong. We're not in chop mode. Shoo. Yeah, there we go. That's better. I was getting scared there for a minute. Okay, so did we get Destructible object sta state, yeah, we got the change notification there. Okay, good. Okay, so it went, made it all the way through. And so now from here, yeah, my eyes are starting to go cross. Um, there it is. <laughs> Okay, so now from here, this comes in on a separate th thread, 99% sure, and we can actually check um, if we tail the log, somewhere in here should be the destructible object system, that's where we're cleaning up. Where's where we clicked? I'm only we're deactivating the zones. Um, destructible object system. These are being called from the game loop thread. That's normal. Destructible client service, destructible object state. Yeah, they're called from the networking. And so we want to make sure to modify things only on the game thread and so we will do this um, eventually I'll do something different but we'll call this um, actually I think I can Ugh. think I can do that? Oh, no, 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 no. It's, yeah, I gotta do this. Um, yeah, okay, because it's a runnable. It doesn't, yeah, that's not gonna work. Okay. Predicted void update object. It's got all these same things. Yeah, but like layer calling, layer calling, layer calling, layer. It's like a standard Java practice. Um, but people complain about that, but Java is a stack-based architecture. The whole thing is designed around a stack-based machine. So it's probably okay. All right, so we will, we've got the models. Let's look it up. Um, we need to get the model. Mm, I want the model info. I want to be able to grab the real thing. So this is the other thing is eventually this will be flipped around and this guy will be keeping track of, he will be providing the cell array that this model view state uses to generate its model. And so I'm having to do things a little backwards. Because we are next to each other, I think I can just call that 
All these guys are private though. What is the... Yeah. Their model info, yep. Yeah, so this gets tricky to do in the live stream. What kind of hackery can I do to make this work? I think if I make this protected, um, fix me. Actually, protect is fine for this. Um, Can I hack in a method? Thing is, it's a long way around. Um, because we normally get our shape from a shape factory. Oh, I could create an M block shape though. Hmm. Can I? Yeah, we create the model from the info. I should be able to add a hacked in method. Can I get the model info from this? So model, hmm. Oops. So we might be able to hack this in. So normally we'd run on the background, we'd call this guy, and we would then, oh, interesting, we can cheat better than that in fact. Um, little hackery okay so let's let's not do let's limit the extent of our hack okay so we're going to add a method actually there's already one um, To get the it's already one down here, get model. Okay, so from here and this is a model view state model impl model models that get model. Even though it's a protected method, we can access it from the same package, so we're being super sneaky. Um, we don't want to create it if model equals null return um, else we're going to log info updating model and what we're going to do is we're going to get its info 
and we've got the shape and in this case we can be reasonably sure that the shapes main part is a cell array but actually yeah so man this is uh, a interesting level of hackery here um, and I'm gonna have to do this in a few Let's let's uh, let's see what we're dealing with. Okay. Oops. Whoa, 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 whoa. Running the wrong command. Okay. So you're gonna have to watch me load the app at least once more just to get traction on what the shape looks like. But we're basically gonna grab that shape and internally it's got a cell array that we're going to like manually poke into. And then we're going to make the model update itself. <laughs> it's all backwards. Ah, man. Yeah, we learned a lot. I learned all the different parts that are done wrong now. And so this weekend I can hopefully make them run right. Hopefully we don't need a part three on this. I'd much rather be to the point where I'm wrapping up the release next weekend. I was hoping to be to the point of wrapping that up this weekend. Everybody needs to tell life to slow down a little bit. Um, okay, so we won't make our mistake again. We'll set the chip, ch tip, ch chip test. Okay, and we'll click on that. Okay, so we should have gotten a shape. Yep, there it is. So we're going to cut and paste that yeah cell array nice the root part is the cell array um, okay so we can exit out and I will just stick this here So yeah, we've got an M block shape. That that part I knew, but yeah, the root part is nicely a cell array. So, um, so cell array part part equals shape get root. I think. Does it let me access the part directly? So let's find. M block shape. There it is. Okay, so what we want to call is oh, it's just get part. Okay, so change root to part. Making mental notes to myself. Um, then it's a cell array part. Can I get the cell array? Yes, get cells. So get part, get cells. Um, cell array cells equals part dot get cells okay get let's get part um, okay so we get the cells and so we'll call cells dot set cell XYZ value mask utils I think it's recalculate masks what's it called Calculate side mask. No, we want to calculate side masks. There we go. All of these are a little slow to be doing whoops all the time, but this is a small object. Okay, and so then model view state we'd normally call Create model with the model info, um, which is not. It's going to call model factory create model with the info and give us the result. 
and so this is kind of a a um, anyway I'm gonna need to get that stuff um, so spatial new model new spatial equals models that create model ha more jiggery hackery jiggery pokery um, okay and so then info dot spatial which is the current spatial it has a parent we will attach the new child and then we will info spatial oops yeah info spatial get parent we remove from parent and then we will set info spatial equal to new spatial so we did like a we did bad things ladies and gentlemen we are hacking into the depths of the model stuff and um, we will see this is bound to cause issues let's just steal the package from over here yeah because the other thing we're not updating lighting um, so lighting's going to get all screwed up for this particular object See if that gets us a little further in the compile chain. Mask utils, we need m block. M block dot star. Celery right. mask utils. That should get us everything. It is because that is info dot shape. I just want us to see something before we stop, right? And then we can wrap it up. It's always nice to end on a cool visual, right? So we still got this guy. Select the right thing. Let's chip test right here. Oh no. The whole object went away. Why though? What did I do wrong? Let's do this. Oh, hmm. Why did that one? Uh oh. My tab just crashed. Are we still live streaming, guys? If you're still on, let me know. Uh, still says we got people on. Okay. That's weird that, um, yeah, so that was weird. It like picked up the last, hmm, update object, updating shape, create model, 
So now will it have, if I do this, will, yeah, both of them are on. So that is really bizarre. Something is getting mismatched. So if I click here, going to replace my old object but somehow keep it cached around so that if I turn one of these objects back into it it's got that missing block so what I'm talking about is if I chop this one out of the middle right here and I do this it's gonna have that middle one missing so there's all kinds of weird leaky stuff going on Um, and who is doing the leaking? That's what I want to know. Hmm. So let's just make sure we're not doing something dumb in here. We get the model. Let's look up. Let's scrap through destructible object state through the client log okay so we are first we yeah we're updating different entities every time so that's all good Oh, the cell array parts are being shared. I forgot about that part. Based on their name. So that's why when we started editing the other object, it was cached. Is it the whole shape itself? Because it could be that we want to make sure to update the the shape too. But that doesn't explain why it disappeared. So, what do we normally do when, so create model's already doing something. Okay, construct info creates a brand new spatial. There is no sharing there at least. Um, it's actually a problem that I have filed a bug about, but um, So model info, all good. Normally on the worker, create the new shape, create the model from that. We keep track of it. And then we set the spatial to current. Okay, so first we set it again, we set it back. but we kept crack of background spatial and so we use background spatial in here we remove the existing one from the parent which is what I did and then object root we attach it to the oh I know it's wrong it's not in the right place because these things get moved around we need to steal the yeah, so I mean this this hackery basically um, we need to steal the translation and um, set local translation 
Uh, what do we want actually new spatial. Set local translation. Um, info spatial get local translation. And probably we should do that for the rotation and scale as well, just to be sure. Set local scale. This is all things we wouldn't have to do if we weren't hacking in like this. Okay, so that should at least fix the whoop. I should at least fix the problem of it disappearing. And um, the fact that they're sharing the shape is a problem. I can correct it here if I wanted to, but really when I do this the right way, it's going to self-correct because those shapes wouldn't even be shared to begin with. Um, yeah, this is a deeper problem on that. All of these shapes, even on the back end, should be be created be being created by that destructible system. What I've done, um, yeah, yeah, that's all got to be redone. I was basically being dumb. Was not looking far enough ahead. All right, at least we should be far enough. I should start rolling forward in time as to the back. Yeah. Yep. All right. So okay. Did everybody turn back to objects? No, those are still... Okay, good. Okay, so we should be able to chip away this top block. Yeah! Woo! Do, 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 do. Do, do. Uh-oh. Some of these... Okay, so... Um... Some of the positions, okay, but that's a normal, um, that's actually a normal thing. The When you click on a block, you have to use the normal of the surface to figure out how far back to project in to figure out where you're actually clicking. And so the fact that we're clicking here, I'm click, click, clicking, you can't tell. Um, it's actually detecting it as being in this block. Whereas over here, we happen to be on the right side of it, and I can drill through, and I can actually drill all the way through. Pretty cool, eh? So I have to fix that um, certain sides of the block. So check it out. It's working. So that means over here it should work too. Um, yeah, so blink, 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 blink. All right. So next steps are to fix this so it's right, to use the partial blocks like the other um, I don't think it's, yeah, it's obviously not physics ready right now. It's still like a whole solid block. Um, like if I check these out, um, like I can still walk on the top of it. Um, so we got to get it working with the physics. Um, like I said, little partial blocks for when we're chopping it. I've got to hook it up to the ax because that's the other thing that's not happened. You know, it's not hooked up to any of the tools. So I can't actually chop like this. Um, it's not gonna. So I need to make that actually chop the blocks instead of the wand. Um, but we're getting close, and you can see something, right? Hopefully, you guys are still online. The YouTube is telling me there's still at least five of you. Um, so hopefully, I can get that wrapped up this weekend, or at least you know, the groundwork, and we don't have to do this again next week. And I can just show you it working, which would be kind of cool. Um, but yeah, so this should work for, yeah, so the nice thing is because these were two different block types, and so is this, so I can come over here, and I could start chopping away at this, so pretty cool, um, yeah, and so if we waited here long enough, you know, these would re revert back to their original blocks, but we're getting close. And then maybe next time, if I've got all this hooked up, we can start hooking up maybe resource counters. I don't actually know if I'm going to get resource counters built in this release or next release. But um, so anyway, cool deal. So any final thoughts or questions before I uh, 
kill it. I think this is where I'm going to stop because the rest is um, sort of deep, deep, deep rewrites of some areas. Um, but I think we're getting close. Let's uh, let's plop a doggy down so that we have something positive to leave. Oops, reset home. So here's a doggy. Come here, doggy. Where'd you go? Come here, doggy. Hello. Oof. All right. So that's where I'm going to end it. Let me find this. It says. All right. We'll go to the thanks page. Thank you for watching. If you watched this far and you haven't already subscribed, consider subscribing. Um, like the video, comment, and so on. If you've watched this far and you didn't like the video, well, God bless you, really. <laughs> um, but if you watched this far, um, consider liking the video if you haven't already and consider subscribing. And again, like in the, you know, back in the video, the, in the upper left corner was the uh, link to download the last version of the engine, which has some cool stuff to check out. Otherwise, I will catch you guys next time and see you on the Discord. Thanks for watching.